Hi, this is Tom Broussard. Great to see everyone. This is a new article about Carl Sagan. Most people know who he is. He's that um, everything to do with science uh, for the for mostly for the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, and he died quite still quite young in 96. Um, but uh, so he is something that everybody knows all about. What I didn't know was that um, after my stroke and learning about uh, aphasia and learning how we come to understand what all of this means, um, of course, I had heard about Broca's area. I, I had no idea what that means to me and most people who don't know much about the brain. Um, and I still couldn't read, but I could see individual words. So I knew what a Broca's area was um, and went looking when I was able to, um, uh, after my uh, end of my uh, therapy, started looking online, looking for anything about aphasia, Broca, Broca's area, and so on, and found a book called um, Broca's Brain. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> um, again, really waiting to figure out how Broca's brain and Broca's area would look like and be. Um, so I bought the book uh, a long, long time ago, two, 10, 11 years ago, um, with, within a year after my stroke. Um, again, still couldn't read it, but I could read individual words, as I mentioned, and then see one word, two words, three words. Bought the book and really realized, because I really didn't know who the author was, found out that it was Carl Sagan, but the real Carl Sagan. Um, I thought that was quite interesting that he had a book called Broca's Area, so I broke his brain. So I figured somehow Carl Sagan must have known more about the brain than I otherwise would have, because um, he's the billions and billions of stars guy. He's the one who always talks about that. Um, so um, as I got better and could read more uh, generally and began to read the book, um, uh, Carlin uh, Sagan had written so many books. I have, I have probably have six or eight books of my own. Here's a copy of Broca's Brain. Um, I have several others here um, that we've all seen. Dale Blue Dot, you might remember this one. Um, I have this one. We've all seen this on TV too, the movie, Contact. Um, I have con com commas too. I have others, but some of them are quite big, so I couldn't pull them out for you to see. Um, the, um, but the first chapter of, of Broca's Brain is the chapter talking about uh, Paul Broca uh, and the Broca's area. And as uh, Sagan was writing a book, in particularly, um, uh, as he said, the exploration of the universe and ourselves, that's the book that he's writing about, he started doing some uh, research and went to uh, Paris to look at various museums and had found out that this, that Broca at the time had uh, been one of the first doctors uh, who had studied the brain, had looked at a variety of people who had stroke and aphasia and began to understand how all of that works, uh, particularly in the left side in what's now called the Broca's area, um, where otherwise called the language center. Um, although what they called back then is something called localized, meaning that this means this and this means this and this means this, and that that's where it is localized in terms of that particular um, uh, skill or ability. Um, now, since then, of course, the other scientists with new tools began to tell us that it's much more like language, much more than just the, the uh, Broca's area and the language center. Um, uh, the, our ability to communicate with language goes throughout the brain. And yes, it still has um, this particular area called the Broca's area that is still the most important part of language. So if there's typically from a stroke, if it's on the, if you have aphasia, uh, you typically typically have a stroke from the left side. Um, 
90 some percent, 99 percent of people that have aphasia are from the left side. Um, there are other ways you can get a stroke. Um, I'm sorry, get aphasia other than a stroke. Um, they can be located in any number of places so that you can have aphasia looking symptoms, loss of language symptoms, uh, and not necessarily from the left area, but almost all from the left. Um, and the um, uh, at the time too, I didn't realize that um, in this in this book and in this chapter, uh, uh, Sagan actually went looking and actually found a vat really of Broca's brain himself. So, and it says it's labeled P. Broca. Um, and uh, I'm sure that is why he decided to call the book Broca's brain because he was actually holding Broca's brain in his hand. Um, the, um, and wrote, uh, Sagan wrote about, the, about uh, Broca um, and how Broca's area even look, looks in terms of what we now know as uh, a uh, uh, endocast, endocranium cast, so that you can actually, um, when you take out the brain, there's the skull itself and it has been formed based on the brain itself. And the way the brain works on the left side in the Broca's area, there is a little indentation here that's very distinctive. Um, like a, they call it like a thimble um, here in the left side so that you can see it. Um, if you do an endocast, which is really just uh, pumping in a bunch of, of rubber casts on the inside of the cranium, um, so you can get to see how the brain itself, as the folds have occurred and they press out into the brain, you get to see the Broca's area and that little thimble called the Broca's area um, and what we now call the endocast. And that's when they found out about one of the um, most completed um, uh, early um, skulls, primitive human skulls, about 1.5 million years ago, who had a Broca's area. So that means for all that period of time, all our lives, every human we're talking about all have a Broca's area. Um, at 1.5 or so million years ago, also had a Broca's area, although other even earlier skulls did not have a Broca's area. So clearly uh, the modern Homo sapien was moving forward from quote, not having one to having one going forward. Um, and that was all part of what becomes what we now know about um, the Broca's area and all of the scientists who were figuring out what had happened in evolution from the, from the millions of years to now just the la last couple of hundreds of years trying to do the, uh, the work that we have done. And that particularly um, uh, skeleton is called, uh, it's called a Homo erectus, and uh, it was called the Turkana boy, and it's now called the much more difficult to pronounce uh, skeleton uh, from that particular area in Kenya, uh, a river in Kenya. Um, and it turns out it was a young boy, about 11 years old, um, and that particular uh, skeleton is the, is the one that was found, discovered, and one particular cast, uh, meaning they've made a, uh, another cast of that skeleton, is in New York um, at the Scientific uh, Museum there. So the, um, it is very, very interesting that uh, Broca's area and Paul Broca himself, um, who had, was famous enough even, even while he was still alive that they etched his name into the Eiffel Tower, along with several other scientists, uh, about 70 more scientists were all etched into the, um, the Eiffel Tower. So uh, it is interesting that all of this comes to people like us who have a stroke and aphasia um, and would never, if, if we didn't have that, we would never know. We would never know about the brain, about aphasia, obviously, unless you're a, a clinician, uh, a therapist, a scientist who are studying the brain, um, 
most of us don't know how the brain works. And we certainly don't know how the brain works when it comes to learning. Um, so that is what I now do. Um, and I'm just really lucky because I happen to have had the stroke and aphasia. I could not read, write, or speak well. I did get better. Um, and I know lots of my friends who are much more severe, and I know it takes an even longer time, if not for the rest of their lives, to continue to um, uh, improve their language. So I'm incredibly lucky that it happened with me that I was damaged enough to have lost my language, but not so damaged that I couldn't get it almost all the way back. So now what I do is study all of the other scientists for the last couple of hundred years to help me understand how the brain works and then help you understand how the brain works. And then the next step really is to help other people, regular uh, uh, healthy people who are educators, scientists, um, who don't really study about the brain, doctors, nurses, um, uh, everybody to understand at least a little bit more about how the brain works so that all of us can better understand how learning happens. And that can help all of us, especially educators then, um, will be able to improve their craft with students, whether it be kids or adults, but to have all of them begin to understand how the brain works and how the activities on the outside create the neural representation on the inside of what the language you would like to know more about uh, become that representation such that it can stay there. You have the memory of it, um, uh, of whatever it is you are trying to learn. And the only way you can do that is through plasticity, um, which converts thought and cognitive activities into new brain matter. And that is how we come to understand how Broca, how Carl Sagan, and the Broca's brain educates all of us to know, like I say, just a little bit more about how the brain works. So just knowing a little helps you learn a lot how we learn. And just by being well aware of how that works, you're better at understanding how learning happens um, and doing what you do as, as part of the tool to learning anything new, whether it's a new language, uh, a new uh, 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 job, um, a new location, whatever it is, uh, this is how it works because you are thinking and you are creating more of your thinking um, uh, base. Yes, and Carl Sagan is the one who talked about his billions and billions of stars. Um, now, as we understand that we now have billions and billions of brain cells um, that were as present with the, um, with the boy 1.5 million years ago with Paul Broca, uh, almost 200 years ago, and you and me, more modern people, and still here. <laughs> Anyhow, that's it for Carl Sagan and talking about the Broca's brain and Paul Broca, who we did a couple of uh, articles ago. So the next one will be in a couple more weeks, and have a good summer so far, and I will see you then. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.